In this uh, video, we'll talk about another example to understand this cytoplasmic inheritance. The first one that we discussed was of mirabilis, that is plastid inheritance. Here we are talking about inheritance of kappa particles in paramecium. So kappa particle inheritance inheritance in paramecium that is paramecium a aurelia paramecium aurelia species now before we take up the inheritance let us talk about what exactly are we talking about the ones which are killer strains that means there are two strains in this paramecium one is called killer and other is known as sensitive strain Killer strains have to have two things, a dominant gene which is responsible for formation of kappa particle. So there, is, there has to be a dominant gene and second there should be these kappa particles, kappa particles. That means if both these things are present, that type or that particular paramecium will be of killer strain. And if any one is absent, then that paramecium would be sensitive. Now, what change does this kappa particle or do these kappa particles bring about? They are responsible for production of a toxin or a material which is known as paramycin. And this paramycin kills the other type of paramecia the ones which are sensitive and the ones which secrete this uh, paramycin they are resistant to this toxin so the ones which have a dominant gene and kappa particles they are killer strain they secrete or produce a substance called paramycin which is toxic to the sensitive strain the other type of paramecia are sensitive they have or they should have at or just one or maybe one should be absent that means if they have only dominant gene no kappa particle still they will be sensitive if they have kappa particle but no gene then also they will be sensitive this inheritance was explained by Sonneborn Sonneborn now let us talk about this uh, inheritance and how does this gene get transferred in paramecium, we know that reproduction, sexual reproduction is not very well developed. There is a primitive type of sexual reproduction shown which is known as conjugation. So, if two paramecia are made to conjugate and we are trying to conjugate the killer strain with the sensitive which is not possible in the nature because killer will produce paramycin and which would kill the sensitive one. So this is done in a lab in a condition where the water in which these paramecia are kept is free of paramycin because if paramycin is present the sensitive are going to be killed or they'll die so conjugation will not take place. So we are talking of a killer strain crossed with a sensitive one. Now if this paramecium has nucleus with capital K and capital K that means both the genes are dominant. The other paramecium, the sensitive one has both the genes which are small k and small k in its nucleus. If they conjugate, the conjugates that means if they show conjugation, what is it going to look like and what will happen? If conjugation takes place for less than three minutes then in that case it is only the nuclear material which is exchanged this time is very very important because if it is less than three minutes it is only nuclear exchange if it is more than three minutes there is nuclear as well as cytoplasmic exchange so let us talk about these two conjugates so they are conjugating there is a conjugation bridge formed between the two and it has one big k other big k 
This has the smaller k and smaller k. Now, the small k comes here and the big k goes here. So, after this nuclear exchange, these conjugates would show one big k here and we are saying that the conjugation bridge is still there. So, one big k, one small which is received from the, this was killer, this was sensitive strain. So, the smaller k is received from the sensitive. This has received big k from the killer strain. So, killer and sensitive. After they separate, they are known as X conjugates. And after separation, what type of strain will they be? This is having capital K and a small k. This is also having capital K and small k. Originally, this was killer. So, this remains killer. And in the beginning, we said what makes a paramecium strain killer is presence of the dominant gene as well as kappa particles. So this must be having these kappa particles in the cytoplasm. Here also these kappa particles are there. Here also these kappa particles and they are still here. No cytoplasmic inheritance or no cytoplasmic exchange takes place if conjugation is for less than 3 minutes. Only nuclear material has been exchanged. So this still remains killer type. And here, only one condition is there. We said to have a killer strain, it should have a dominant gene that is capital K and kappa particles in the cytoplasm. So this one will still remain the sensitive strain. So if conjugation takes place between a killer and a sensitive strain for less than three minutes, only nuclear material gets exchanged there is no exchange of cytoplasm. Killer strain remains killer after conjugation is over. The sensitive strain has received a capital K but no kappa particles and the condition required to become killer is having capital K and kappa particles. Now let us talk about the same type of conjugation but this time it is more than three minutes what change will take place. So we are changing only one situation that means if conjugation takes place for more than three minutes. Now what is going to happen is nuclear material will get exchanged and cytoplasmic content will also get exchanged. That means some cytoplasm will also go here. Cytoplasm will carry these kappa particles. So now the sensitive strain has received the dominant K which is through nuclear exchange and kappa particles through cytoplasmic exchange and after separation this has kappa particles that means and this gene also so this sensitive is going to change into killer strain. So the only condition which decides the strain of the X conjugates would be the time of conjugation. If it is less than 3 minutes, only nuclear material gets exchanged. If it is more than 3 minutes, nuclear as well as cytoplasmic. And if cytoplasmic content gets exchanged, kappa particles from the killer strain will be passed on to the sensitive. And now when they separate, both will be of killer strain. That is why this inheritance in paramecium is also known as nucleocytoplasmic inheritance. Now we know why we have used this term. Earlier, when we took the example of mirabilis, we said it is known as plastid inheritance because the genes which were coming from a particular plant were coming from the egg and the egg cytoplasm had plastic. Here, the inheritance or that strain change is due to two things. The chromosome or the dominant gene, that is the nuclear part, and kappa particles which are coming from the cytoplasm. And that is why it is called nucleocytoplasmic inheritance. So, this is the second example. These kappa particles are cytoplasmic particles. They replicate, duplicate on their own and their number 
should be normally more than 400 for a strain to become killer. So if it is more than 400 kappa particles, particles, if they are more than 400, then the strain becomes killer because now it is able to secrete that paramycin, which is the toxin. So in case of mirabilis, only plastid inheritance. In case of this, there is nucleus as well as cytoplasmic both. In the next video, we'll talk about shell coiling in snails.